Uh, good morning, Steve. Good to see you guys. Well, look, the the, the key to to that to answer that question to me is that what drives markets is not really the level of growth. It's the rate of change. It's that second derivative. And yes, the level of growth is already very strong and will remain so for a few more months. But we're anticipating that rate of growth to peak and to then sort of moderate. And when that happens, the character of markets do change. So that's one of the factors that we're pointing to, along with the signal that the liquidity train is starting to slow down. Uh, and the third being uh, what we could call maybe persistently transitory inflation, which we still think is, is transitory, but could cause some uh, indigestion for markets uh, as it may be persists for the rest of this year. So that combination, we call it a troika of, of headwinds, would be something that can just offset this uh, uh, strength that we're seeing right now. You, and I know it's very persuasive, and yet, uh, and yet, now that we've got a Federal Reserve that refuses to look at outlook, it is now looking at outcomes, means that by nature it could potentially be behind the curve instead of being too aggressive on the tightening front as well. And I hear about your troika as well, but I could probably match that with my own troika, but I can only uh, just say one or two factors now, and that is buybacks continue as well. The cash uh, is still going to be huge coming from individuals as well as corporations, uh, and by and large, as I say, the Federal Reserve doesn't look like it's changing rates rather than the, uh, the asset purchasing anytime soon. So I hear your argument and it is persuasive, but there is a counter. No, and I would agree. And thank you for raising those. I would like to put our comments into context. We're already currently probably more pro-risk than others have been and have been positioned that way for the last 12 months. And we and our clients have been rewarded for that. What we're talking about is really just tapping it down towards neutral. We're not talking about an outright de-risking. We still think that we're in a multi-year expansion. And so we think there's a lot of returns to be gained over time, uh, over the years to come, not even months or so. It's just that within those expansions, you get meaningful pullbacks. And these are the type of conditions that can lead to those. Some clients who have very long-term uh, positions or strategic asset allocation can look through those. What we're saying is that on a risk reward basis, it makes sense to take some of those profits off the table, but remain certainly at least neutral on the level of risk that you're taking. We're not talking about outright de-risking uh, at this point. Hani, we started out the year talking about uh, what was going right for a lot of Japanese companies, sort of technology that they had built up in some of these businesses and how well poised they were for the future. But in recent times, we've seen a fairly aggressive sell-off. You put this down to the virus, but I question that uh, because what we have witnessed in some of the other markets, investors have been able to see their way through uh, some of the, the downbeat uh, moments that they've witnessed around the pandemic. So is it really just the virus or is there something else going on with Japanese stocks at this point? That's a good point. Um, I think if you look at prior to this kind of uh, pullback in Japanese equities, the Nikkei was actually keeping up with the S&P. That's no mean feat, as, as we all have seen uh, over the years. And so the fact that it actually coincided when we started to see uh, issues with the virus and you know the, the actual vaccine rollout I think that correlation is, is not necessarily causation, but it's kind of compelling that that's really the primary reason why you've seen a pullback at this point. But to your point, we think that uh, we, we will see a rebound from, from Japan, uh, partly because of this global growth backdrop that's helpful, but also because Japan's manufacturing has actually lagged uh, others. And a lot of it has to do with the auto sector because of those chip shortages which we think are going to resolve over time. And so this becomes a, a better entry point for a global growth proxy that has lagged, has all the ingredients that we think can allow it to, to play catch up.